But that's what happens in the United States. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's how they greet a dog. Dog in a, in a third world country, dog where I'm from, what your parents teach you is no touch, no talk, no eye contact. Let the dog come to you. Right? So, it's hundreds of dogs in Mexico, hundreds, packs everywhere. So people walk normally, you know, around the dogs, you have your, you just came from the market, you know what I mean? And you, you know, you got meat. No dog is trying to get close to your bag. None of them. And nobody's like, oh my God, a dog. Oh. <laughs> you know, nobody's concerned about an off-leash dog. We learn, we grew up in, around dogs. And so what our parents teach us is no touch, no talk, no eye contact. So that way we create a little bubble around us. And, and we tell the animal or we tell the dog, this is my space, that is your space. In a modern society, parents teach kids touch, talk, and eye contact. So this is how the parents teach it. Ask the person if you can touch the dog. Be polite. Right? Remember. So now the kid is like excited. Right? And it's a dog right next to him. And the dog already senses there is a kid about to approach. And the dog is like, don't let it touch me. Don't let it touch me. The dog is having a conversation with the owner. And the owner is like, sit down and don't embarrass me. Sit down and do not embarrass me. Remember, we went to dog training classes. Sit down. Sit down. I said, sit down. Sit down, stay. Be nice to the kid. Be nice to the kid. Be nice to the kid. Max, be nice. That time, Max is like, seriously, don't let him come near me. Your team just did that last week, actually. I'm sure a lot of you did that, too. I had a full conversation with my dog just the other day. We need water here. This guy won't. Thank you. Okay. It's my affection. <laughs> Isn't it such a privilege to have Caesar here today? Yeah. In my culture, it's a privilege to come to your home, right? So I am privileged to be here. I am blessed to be here. Uh, you never know what the path is taking you. You know, uh, I I know I owe being here to my parents, but. To be around the world, I owe that to a dog. Literally. All right. Okay. Um, balloons, right? The things that have my shield. My okay. Power Ranger shield. I watched the afternoon, sorry. Okay, Caesar. Yeah. I'm sure these guys have uh, some questions. Yeah, let's do it. Why not answer some I, I don't I, mind. I will go down there with my microphone. I don't speak. Caesar is here. Okay. So if you've got a question for Caesar, yeah. please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. Okay, I'll, I'll start off this way first. Of course, all the way up there. Okay, right? Nobody in the front. Everybody in the top. It's okay. Have a little talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need exercise. Yeah. Just to get the infection. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> huh. yeah, for the parents, you can apply exercises of affection to your kids. Absolutely. <laughs> What's your question? You must do it. I want to say thanks so much for coming. You have to come back. And. Okay. As long as you give me chicken rice. <laughs> It's really good and very cheap. Where's Junior? Junior? Where's Junior? Junior right now is in LA. He's uh, in about two more weeks. I'm going to meet him in Spain. You know, we're going to do a new show. It's called The Pack Leader. And that show, do you want to know what the show is all about? Yes! All right. so, so Dog Whisper is about rehabilitation, right? It's about a dog that has a house. It's about a dog that has, you know, family. So the dog doesn't need to be rescued, the dog doesn't need to be uh, find a home. The new show is about me showing you how I rescue a dog, how I rehabilitate a dog, and then how I find him a home. So it's two, two ingredients missing, you know, from the previous show. So it's really the next generation of what I, what I, what I feel that my path is in life, right? Is how can I decrease the amount of 600 million dogs in the world, right? Uh, that they don't have a home, or people don't know how to rescue them, or they don't know how to, uh, if that dog is compatible to the family, you know what I mean? It, a lot of people feel, well, the dog was in the street, he has baggage, but the human has baggage too, 
You know what I mean? So the dog in the street will let go of the baggage quicker than a human. So once I show the world that this is what we need to do to, uh, to really be there for the dog, right? So that's, that, that's, that's, what the, that, that's what the next show is all about. And as you know, I always need my sidekick, right? And that's Junior. So that's, he's gonna meet me uh, in uh, Spain. Because we travel from LA to, uh, to England, that he has to be in quarantine, and then if I come here, it's another quarantine, so Junior pretty much would spend his vacation in quarantine. <laughs> hey, Junior, how was your vacation? Quarantine. <laughs> I don't know, I was from one island to another island and they kept me in quarantine. I didn't pee in any tree. <laughs> Just a quick thing, you're doing so much great work with regard to pit bulls and breed specific legislation, and so thank you. Yeah, thank um, you. Here in Singapore we have breed specific legislation and we can't have pit bulls here, for example. Well, yeah, so there's a lot of dogs we can't have here, and it's just desperately sad, but I can't be political. Okay. Um, how are you progressing in the U.S. with all the great work you're doing with trying to educate people about pit bulls, for example? Can you share with us how your progress is going? Well, uh, the, first, the, the first thing is, is definitely the awareness that it needs to happen in society, because when a, it's... It's like racism, right? But in the breed world. Because uh, we love dogs, but we don't like this breed. You see what I mean? We love human beings, but we don't like this race. It's the same thing, it's the same principle. But what, what, what they need to learn to recognize is, is not the breed, it's the human behind the dog, out. So now that we know it's not the breed, let's make a, a decision makes in, uh, from, from a knowledge perspective. Not from ignorance perspective or fear perspective. So I understand that sometimes people are not ready for powerful breed. But if you make a decision from a fearful perspective or ignorance, ignorance perspective, you're still going to have that problem. You see, it? in the 70s, it was the Doberman, the breed that people were afraid of. In the 70s. Then they wiped off the Doberman. Right? And then in the 90s was the Rottweiler. And then in the 2000s, the Pitbull. So what that shows you is, through history, human keep playing being breeds. Human doesn't take responsibility of what he's doing wrong. And that is the awareness. You see what I mean? So, as you know, we human beings take a little longer than Mother Nature to change. You see it? But it, it, slowly but surely, I mean, I think the prayers and, and people really uh, uh, yes, changing behavior, forget about the pit bulls and the rock riders, just people have problems with Pomeranians. You know, people have problems with chihuahuas. There is aggressive chihuahuas all over the world. It's an epidemic. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So aggression is not the problem. Aggression is the outcome of a problem. You see what I'm saying? It, it, we have aggression in all breeds, not just in Rottweilers and pit bulls. It's just a pit bull and a Rottweiler is, is a more powerful breed. But the problem is the human is not really um, commi committed to a relationship. That's the problem. And once we recognize that as a world, right, then we're gonna change. We're gonna transform our relationship with Mother Nature. Unfortunately, it takes a long time for the human because he needs to hit rock bottom in order for him to go back to surface. That's the only thing I, I have a, a little difficulty being human. That's why I hang with the dogs more often. <laughs> They move on faster than us. You see it in the show. You see that I get a dog that is gonna kill a dog. I get a dog that's gonna kill me, and a week later, boom, he's different. You see what I mean? He's different because I gave him a different life. That's why he's different. It's, you see it? It really took the the partnership. You know, it's, it's a partnership that we have. I don't think I, I'm doing everything by myself. It's a partnership. He tells me what I want. You know, if a dog comes to me, he does this thing to me. He's talking to you. He's not going to say, uh, I'm about to bite. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's not going to send me Twitter. You see what I mean? He's not in that world. He's in the world of being with you. There's the energy behind. You know, one of my, one of the, the most amazing cases that I work with is not the aggressive cases. I love, I love the danger. I love, you know, like mountain climbers, love to climb a mountain. I, I love the aggression thing, right? But, 
the challenges that I have and the most deeper connection I ever had was with a blind and deaf dog. Blind and deaf. He can't see me, he can't hear me, but he can smell me like nobody else. See it? And he can feel me. So that when a dog is born, he's born with his eyes closed and his ears closed. 15 days later, they open the eyes. 21 days later, they open the ears. So practically, they're born blind and deaf. So I have raised puppies, but I never worked with an adult dog that was blind and deaf. And that was an awesome experience. The deepest connection ever. He knew. He will move. I, don't, I can't tell it. Like, come here, this way. This way, no. You're gonna hit the wall. Come here. He just feel me. Trust at the deepest level. Quicker than any other dog. Another question? Yeah, Caesar, over here. Um. <laughs> Hi, Caesar. Welcome to Singapore. My name is Ida. I've got a mini schnauzer. You want me to help you? I'm a good babysitter. Yeah, yeah um, I, I just have a new addition, my kid. So my mini Snouser is a little upset and jealous uh, because of my kid. What? Um, Your dog? My dog mini Snouser is jealous of my uh, new kid, my kid. So um, I'm trying to handle both together. Um, because my dog is very upset, clearly very upset, and um, over time, he's, she's beginning to alienate from me. Uh, first of all, um, I want to know whether she still loves me. I believe she still does. Um, I want to let her know that uh, how do I show that I, I still am her master and love her, but in a different way? Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, um... That's 15 questions right now. No, no, it's, just, it's one question. It's, it's one question. See, your, you know, your previous relationship with your dog, right? Your previous relationship with your dog was based on affection first, right? So the order of fulfillment was a little backwards. So if you, if you just understand that the dog needs exercise, discipline, then affection, your dog won't, won't have any problems with the transition. You the one is in <laughs> my dog. See, there's no way in the world that a dog will feel jealous of, of, a, of a family member. Sir, I'm talking to her. Sir? Thank you. <laughs> you, you understand? Are you, are you with me? Okay, a dog loves family. A dog does not believe in separation of the family. So the jealousy is created by the way human is relating to a dog. It's not because the dog wants to relate this way with his family. Remember, to a dog, loyalty is everything. He's loyal to the family. Yeah? So once you change, exercise, discipline, affection, your dog will finally become happy and understand what the role is before you give it a role of your baby. Yep, the dog was your baby. Yes? Yeah. Now, that's your baby right there. You see it? That, so, that's the reality. Your dog, now that, he's, now that you're going to love him like a dog, right? He's going to be happy. Right? So I have two kids and 20 dogs. Two kids, two human kids and 20 dogs. Who do you think I love more? All of them. That's right. That's why I don't create jealousy. Are you with me on that? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I love them as a family. Hope you feel a little more sure now. Yeah. Get back. Yes. It's gonna get cooler, Susan. Huh? It's gonna get cooler. Awesome. Actually, it's gonna get more humid. It will snow soon. 
Okay, who else? Oh, right here. What's your question? Oh, your question. We are said to use carbon as a preservative energy. Yes, sir. Can you tell us more about this? Can you tell us more about this energy that you use? I didn't get the last part. You are said to use carbon as a preservative energy when you handle dogs. Can you tell us more about this? All right. Good. All right. So let's calm. Do you guys hear the question? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So calm assertive energy, right? You understand stressful energy, right? You understand it, right? You stressed out, tense, tense. Okay. Calm is relaxation. Let's separate the two. Calm is relaxation. Not because you're quiet, you're relaxed. Right? So a lot of people, yeah, I'm relaxed. <laughs> and you ask them, how you feel? I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> what do you see? I'm not fine, right? I'm just saying I'm fine. An animal will sense that. You don't have to tell them how you feel. He knows how you feel. Right? Even a blind dog, even a deaf dog. An animal, even if it's not a dog, a horse, no, a cat, no, right? It's, it's an animal understanding, it's a universal language, energy. All animals in the world know when you are relaxed. You don't have to tell the elephant, by the way, I'm relaxed today. <laughs> right? You understand what I'm saying? Now, assertiveness, being assertive, comes from the knowledge. So, understanding a dog, nose, eyes, ears, that order. Not ears, eyes, nose. Nose, eyes, ears, right? Understanding that a dog is a family member or pack member. Two positions in the pack. Leader, follower, right? Two positions in the pack. Now, once he realized that you understand this concept, that, that gives you an understanding to know what to do with. Right? So when, I, so when I'm in front of a dog, in my mind, no touch, no dog, no eye contact. How far am I from the dog? 16 feet. How do I feel? Just me, how do I feel? Then I see how the dog feels. Right? So I look at the dog, the dog is like... So okay, that dog feels nervous about me. So what do I do? Do I go towards the dog? Knowing that he's nervous? No. I give the back. As soon as I give the back, I break the eye contact. You see what I'm saying? So me knowing the, not, me knowing the nature of a dog gives me the, the, uh, the ability to feel assertive or confident about it. Are you, are you getting it? Yeah, it's like driving. If you're nervous, you're gonna... But if you understand the rules of driving, you're more likely to move around. But it also helps that when you drive, you're calm. It's because you can deal with traffic better. You understand? So calm and confident, it applies in every situation in life. Especially with animals. Because they know when you're not confident. Yeah? Have you ever seen... Have you ever seen a... Um, have you ever guys seen a cat? You know a cat, right? You, you know cats. You know cats? Yes. Have you ever seen a cat telling a dog what to do? Well, that's because the cat knows that he, energy-wise, is stronger than the dog. And the cat goes, Oh, I gotcha. <laughs> See that? And the cat will move. <laughs> Towards the dog. <laughs> See it? The cat understands that that dog energy is lower than his. And that's how the cat said, well, in this house, I'm going to control you and the human. You guys belong to me. You see what I mean? You understand what I'm saying? So, that's, that just shows you, you know, that when they say cats and dogs, that's, that's not the truth. The truth is that a cat understands energy as well as a dog. And the only one who is not 
aware of energy is, is humankind. That's where we're disconnected of that awareness, right? We, we're more connected about iPods and iPhones and, you know, satellites and things like that. We actually have to watch the weather channel to know how the weather's going to be like. Animals know, it's like, oh yeah, it's going to rain today. I'm just going to move this way. See, the human have to watch the weather channel. You see, the animals don't watch weather channel. The animals are connected to Mother Nature. So all animals are part of Mother Nature. Did I answer your question? Because you're looking everywhere. <laughs> you know I'm talking to you like... <laughs> you look like my son. <laughs> you know, he has a list of questions there. He has a list of 100 questions in there. Is he right? Well, he's not paying attention. <laughs>